Hello there and welcome back to my videos. In this video we want to speak about the Amazon Web Services and in this video we want to speak uh, about the, the Cognito. The Cognito is a, is a user database where your user can have the password and you will not get it. It will uh, confirm the user's uh, email and something like that. It's very nice and it's very useful so I will uh, try to explain how it's working. So first you need to go inside the Amazon Web Services and then we are ready to, to continue. But before we continue, I really hope you want to subscribe to this channel. You can do it by clicking on the thing below in the right corner. And if you have any questions, please make it in the comments below. I'll try to answer you as fast as I can. Thank you and uh, let's go in for the next step. Let's go in here to the search field and search for Cognito. You should see the Cognito logo here and you can go inside and click. You have two choices. The first is a manage user pools and the second one is a manage identity pool. What we're gonna do is going for the manage user pools and we want to create a new user pool here in the right corner up here. I will just call for YouTube test pool and then I'll go into the review defaults and inside here we want a little bit of changes before we are ready to, to click down here to the create pool. You need to go in for the attributes and click email and allow email address to log in. We don't need the phone number right now, not in this tutorial. Going down here and click on the email here. It's very important you're scrolling down to click on the next step. If you don't do this and only click on the policy, it will not save the, the email uh, changes here. Then we're going down to the app client and we are ready for, for, for add an uh, app client here. So now let's click on the add uh, app client and what we're going to do here is just a UT um, test client. That's what we're going to do now. You can name it whatever you want. And the refresh token expire like 30 days. That's meaning when the user is logged in, then it will give the refresh token. The refresh token can can be to get the, the access token expiring and the access token we have should expire like uh, 60 minutes you can set it down to 5 minutes it's up to you then you have the ID token experience then it's uh, the same here we have the generate client secret I will disable this because I have problems to use that I've read about it should be in beta and something like that and it's not react as you expect all the time so for me I'm just uh, just disable this about the beta or not I'm not 100% sure that's only something I have reading on the stack overflow so it could be something random people say but for now I'm just cleaning this off I enable everything so I can use everything I want in the future and then I going down to the security configuration and I will want to enable that and then I click to the to the app client here and then you have it. If you need more clients, you can just add it up here. Now we are here, I will go in for the policy. The policy here, you can always change it when you are having created the pool. And for now, I'm saying the password should be eight, uh, minimum eight lengths. Should be requiring numbers, special characters, upper and lower cases. Sometimes you only want uh, this clicked off, but it's up to you. You can do whatever, what, uh, what you want. And down here you can say allow users to sign up themselves, or you can only say the administrator need to create the user. In my case, I want everyone to can create the user itself because I want to try to make a normal user login. And then we can just say safety changes, but we don't have changed anything. So MFA is a multi-factor authentication. Right now it's uh, it's off. We can always uh, set it as optional, but for now it's off and you can set settings down here. And you have name role here. So we'll come later into the, some other uh, tutorials. You can change the message configuration and I will just say it should be from zero. 
I'm from Europe, so I want to set that up too. I'm going to scroll down and save it up. And then we have devices. For now, I will not want to remember devices for the user. But you can see always for that. And we have a trigger. If you use the Lambda functions, you can use the triggers. I'm not using it. I will use my own Python code. So that's what we're going to do now. Let's go in for a review. And you can see about everything here. It's as we want. And then we want to create the pool. Congratulation, you have the pool now. And you have the pool ID when you click here. You have the pool ID. And if you need the client ID, you can go in for the app clients and you can see the clients. If you have selected like the, um, uh, the secret, you can show details and your secret will be here. You can change your uh, app client data uh, about based on what you want or you can create a new one. When you see this, this uh, code here with the general settings and the app clients will not be available because I will delete this pool and recreate it so you don't have my login uh, in settings. So that's what we're going to do and learn today. I really hope you enjoy and I really hope you understand how you can create your first user pools for Cognito in Amazon Web Service. Thank you and I really hope you want to subscribe to this channel. Go in the right corner below and click on the thing. Don't forget to share and like and I really hope you send uh, comments below if you have any questions. Thank you and hope to see you next time. Bye.